The topic is the core of the MQTT Publish Subscribe Mechanism. A good topic design can reduce the difficulty of deploying MQTT applications and improve the scalability of MQTT applications. So in this lesson, we will cover the topic of MQTT in detail. The MQTT topic must be a UTF-8 encoded string with a maximum length of 65,535 bytes, and it is case sensitive. MQTT topics support a hierarchical structure, and we can use the forward slash separator to divide topics into multiple levels. The length of the topic level can be zero, so slash home, home, and home slash are three different topics. We need to be careful about this in our daily usage. The topic level is mainly used with topic wildcards to achieve flexible subscriptions. MQTT provides two kinds of topic wildcards, the single-level wildcard represented by the plus sign and the multi-level wildcard represented by the hashtag. Topic wildcards must completely occupy a whole topic level. Once a topic wildcard already exists in a level, then no other content can appear. A single-level wildcard can match any content within the topic level it resides in. Suppose we have the following scenario. Temperature sensors deployed in the living room and the bedroom. They periodically publish the current temperature values to the topics home slash bedroom slash temperature and home slash living room slash temperature, respectively. If we want to get the temperature of these two rooms, we can subscribe to these two topics in turn, which is very simple. However, if we deploy temperature sensors in every room of our home, including the hallway, study, and so on, it would be inelegant to still need to subscribe to each topic one by one we can find that these topics only change in the level that represents the room. So we can use a single level wildcard to replace this level when subscribing. This way, we can attain the temperature of all rooms. However, a single level wildcard cannot match multiple topic levels. So, if we have more different sensors, such as motion sensors, door and window sensors, TVOC sensors, and so on, we will no longer be able to use home slash plus to subscribe to all sensor messages. Of course, we can replace the level representing the room and the level representing the sensor type with single level wildcards separately. This is feasible. By subscribing to this topic, we can get messages from all rooms and all sensors. This is because the single level wildcard can appear multiple times within a topic. We can use it at any topic level, including the first and last. So regardless of the topic's content, as long as they have similar patterns, we can use single-level wildcards to subscribe to them. Returning to the previous scenario, do we have an easier way? Of course. We can use the multi-level wildcard. It can match multiple levels. So we can replace all the content after home slash with the hashtag. In this scenario, its effect is identical to subscribing to home slash plus slash plus. Maybe that makes it seem less appealing to you. But if we also have some of additional topics, they include an extra level representing the floor. If we subscribe with a single level wildcard, we must subscribe to both home slash plus slash plus and home slash plus slash plus slash plus one by one. However, if we subscribe with the multi-level wildcard, we only need to subscribe to home slash hash. In practical usage, we often encounter situations where the number of topic levels is not fixed. We can also use both single-level wildcards and multi-level wildcards in a topic. It is important to note that wildcards can only be used when subscribing and unsubscribing to topics. We cannot use wildcards when publishing because we can't publish messages to multiple topics at once. Due to this distinction, the topic used in subscription and unsubscription is called the topic filter, while the topic used when publishing is called the topic name. MQTT does not impose many restrictions on topics content, we can name them as we like. However, one exception is the use of topics starting with a dollar sign. These topics are reserved for use by servers. Clients are prohibited from using such topics to publish messages, but they can subscribe to these topics from the server. For example, topics starting with dollar system slash are typically used by MQTT servers to publish specific information such as server uptime client online or offline notifications, and traffic statistics. 
However, the MQTT protocol does not provide additional specifications or restrictions on this matter, so the content of published messages and topics used may vary across different MQTT servers. Subscribing to topics starting with dollar is different from regular subscriptions. Based on our earlier introduction to topic wildcards, when we subscribe to hash, we should be able to receive messages from topics starting with dollar. But in reality, they won't be included. If we want to receive all messages under dollar system slash, we must explicitly subscribe to the dollar system slash hash topic. This design is intended to distinguish system messages from regular messages and avoid receiving unexpected system messages when using hash for the subscription. Next, some recommendations for best practices for MQTT topics. First, avoid using a slash as the beginning or ending of a topic. Although this is allowed by the protocol, the extra slash doesn't add any practical meaning and often leads to confusion. People may find it confusing when subscribing to home slash plus, but not receiving messages from the topic home slash temperature slash. Second, avoid using spaces within topics. Why am I not receiving any messages? Did I subscribe to the wrong topic? When spaces are used within a topic, it becomes challenging to distinguish between a single space and multiple spaces. Moreover, it becomes unclear whether the space represents an actual space or another invisible character that appears as a white space. This can introduce additional complexities during debugging. Third, use only ASCII characters. Although the protocol specification allows topics to be UTF-8 strings, it does not mean that it is a good choice to use non-ASCII UTF-8 characters in practical usage. This is because they may not be correctly displayed in our console and logs, which can complicate our use cases. Fourth, you can use the multi-level wildcard, but avoid subscribing directly to topic hash. This means you will receive all messages passing through the MQTT broker. However, subscribing clients usually cannot bear such a high message load in actual use. Additionally, if new topics are added later, new messages may cause errors in clients ascribed to hash. Fifth, don't use too many topic levels. Although MQTT allows for any number of topic levels as long as it doesn't exceed the limit of 65,535 bytes, it is evident that the more levels there are, the greater the overhead on the server when establishing subscriptions and routing messages. In most scenarios, the number of topic levels within 10 can meet our needs. If the number of levels exceeds this threshold, we must seriously consider which levels are essential and which can be simplified. 6. Let topics convey the information. When deploying multiple temperature sensors in a user's home, incorporating the sensor's device ID as a level in the topic allows us to differentiate messages from different sensors. Furthermore, including the room location of the sensor as part of the topic can greatly assist us in determining which topics to subscribe to. Additionally, our messages typically serve different purposes. Some are meant for transmitting control commands, such as turning lights on or off, while others are for reporting status and configuration, such as returning the current brightness and color of the light. Some messages are used for periodic telemetry reporting, such as temperature sensors reporting their current temperature values. We can reflect this in the topic. For example, control commands use the prefix command, status messages use the prefix status, and telemetry data use the prefix telemetry. Last, keep the topics concise. Every message we publish includes a topic, so it's beneficial to keep the topics as short as possible. This helps reduce network bandwidth consumption and improves the processing efficiency of backend applications that handle large amounts of incoming data. Using appropriate abbreviations that do not cause ambiguity is a good approach. For example, the topic prefixes we mentioned earlier can be abbreviated as follows. Keep these tips in mind, they will help you a lot. Thanks for watching.